Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Que nos bendijo con toda bendición espiritual. Pleasen sei der Gott und Vater unseres Herrn. Jesucristo, nashang nagpala sa atin. Que nos dé nuestras vidas y que nos dejó que nos dejó. En Cristo, en Cristo. Cristo en eso. En Cristo. Filma así. Cristo en eso. En Cristo. I want to thank you, Fidel, for that introduction, and and I'm I'm really grateful for this opportunity to preach the word tonight. At para sa mga taga TUB, pasensya na kayo pa talaga nalaman at balik na ako sa Yuma. Pero siya mag-usap na lang tayo mama ya. Sorry ya. Hindi mo. But you know, I'm really excited for tonight. Sino dito excited ka to pray for the campus and for the next generation? Come on. And who among you are excited for the breakthroughs and to seek God more? At talaga magkaroon ka ng new level of faith. Come on, sino yung excited ka? I know I look forward in eating chicken, spaghetti, pizza. Na joke lang. Ay sorry, sorry. All right, so. Uh, as you know, I, I want to show you this picture first. This is my family. So this is my sister. And this is my dad. Yung dad ko nandito actually. So nandito siya. And my sister, nag-work siya. So wala siya dito. But in case you're um, nag-wonder kayo why my mom is not there, well, she reunited with our father in heaven already. So I'm happy naman that she's there already. No more hurt, no more pain. So tonight, we're going to talk about campus. So Gino dito, you're a student and you're proud of it. <laughs> Sino dito mga graduating na and you're excited to change the world? All right, so we're talking about uh, this campus and this campus night. Uh, for those who are not student anymore, uh, don't worry. Hindi po ang message po na ito hindi lang po para sa mga studenting katulad ko. Ayon jo kala. Pero para puto sa ating lahat. And I pray that the word of God will really um, refresh our souls. And speaking of young people. We're gonna talk about uh, tonight a young woman living in a different in the Bible. She lived in a different world, but she really made a great impact. I want to talk about Esther. Si ito kilala niyo si Esther. Si Esther, si Jante. Anyway, all right. So si Esther, as we all know, de ba? Um, I wait. Um, I wanna share you this. Um, oh wait. So si Esther, it was. That time, she was living in Persia along with her adoptive father, which is actually pinsa niya. So, inadopt lang siya ng pinsa niya. And now, si Esther ay nagkaroon, sumali siya sa isang beauty pageant. So, ever since pala, meron na talagang Miss Universe. Pero that time, pag nanalo ka, magiging rey na ka. And now, the, uh, Mordecai, yung pinsa niya na nag-adopt sa kanya, found out that there was a plot to assassinate all Jews. So, ibig sabihin, lahat iwa-wipe out yung mga Israelites that time. And now, nung naging queen na si Esther, because siya yung nanalo sa pageant, sinabi sa kanya ni Mordecai, Esther, since now you're the queen, you have to help us. Since nandyan ka, nakausapin mo na yung king. But now, it says here, I, I want to take this time to, to read first. Um, from verse 14, it says there, For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Can we take time to pray first? Lord, we want to thank you for tonight. And we are excited, Lord, to know more about you, Lord, and what you're going to do great and mighty in our lives, Lord. Um, anoint Anoint me, Lord, as I preach your word, and even, Lord, uh, Lord, refresh our soul, Lord, with this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, just to give you a glimpse of what was it like at that time, nung sinabi ko, parang Miss Universe. So, imagine niyo, dahil sabi ko nga, young woman, di ba, si Esther, that time, sumali siya sa pageant. So, Israelite na sumali sa pageant na bata. So, sino dito namumukaan niyo to? Okay? Okay? Any hint? Any guess? This is actually Wonder Woman. She is, she is Gal Gadot when she was a teenager joining a pageant. But syempre, at that time, hindi naman talaga ganyan yung itsura niya. So, imagine na lang natin na ganyan siya. So, let's just Im try to imagine that this is Esther. So, what I, was, uh, what, I was, uh, uh, what I mentioned earlier is that there was a plot to assassinate Jews. And now, Mordecai asked her, ask her, but this is the reply of Esther. 
In verse 11, if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death. But as for me, I have not been called to come into the king these 30 days. So that was the context that time na hindi ka pwedeng basta, basta pumasok dun sa inner court kasi mamamatay ka. And now here, what Esther was basically saying is, pag ginawa ko yan, mamamatay ako. So ayoko, boys boy mission yan. And you know, I realized that even naka-risk na yung buong angkan nila, yung, hindi, actually yung buong race na ng Israel that time, umayaw pa din siya. Why? And because, I believe that she's afraid, right? And I realized that isn't that so familiar with us? Na there are a lot of times na may sinasabi sa atin si Lord, pero Lord, ayoko ang gawin yan kasi ganto. I don't want to do this because of this. For me, maybe for some of us here, I don't want to be generous because alam ko, natatakot ako, baka ma-short ako. Ayoko magbigay ng tights kasi baka ma-short ako for this month. I, I don't want to bless people kasi ako nga, kulang pa ako. Or maybe, I don't want to trust people anymore because I am afraid that they will betray me again. Or I don't want to open up to people because I know that they won't understand me or they will just judge me. And I believe that we all have our own, I don't want to blank because blank. Tama ba? I know that at some point of our lives, we, ha- we all have our own statement like this. But I believe that what actually we are trying to say is I don't want to step out in faith because I am scared. The reality is we are being paralyzed by faith. Fear is real. I want to take this time to really acknowledge the reality that fear is present in our lives. That fear is present in the young generation, the next generation, and even in the older generation. For the young generation, I believe that for some of you, you have this fear of, for us, fear of missing out. Yung hindi ka nabibilong, yung merong, merong mga may hangout dito, tapos hindi ka in-invite. And that means for you is that you are rejected, that you don't belong. That there's fear na isa lang yung magla-like ng post mo. Sa dinami-dami ng filter mo, isa lang yung nag-like, nanay mo pa. At sa lahat-lahat ng mga fears natin, and you know, the reality of our next generation is that there are a lot who are currently experiencing depression that leads to death. That is the effect of fear. And I believe that for, for some of us who are not uh, young, but young at heart, we have our own fears in our families, in our finances, in our relationship. Magkaka-boyfriend pa ba ako? Kahit 55 na ako? Or mag- but I, I believe that we have a lot of fears in our lives. You know, in this verse, in verse 14, it says, For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Now, Mordecai was telling Esther, kahit hindi, ka, hindi mo to gawin, naniniwala ako na God will do or will rescue His people. That even if you don't agree to do this, He is still faithful. And now, Mordecai, the, the great thing about this is Mordecai was injecting faith, faith to Esther, telling her that God is sovereign, that God is still in control. But the question is, but the challenge is, are you willing to be part of this? Are you willing to be part of this? Because if we keep silent, we are just waiting to see the destruction of our faith. We are just waiting to see the destruction of our family. We are just waiting to see the destruction of the next generation. That's what we are waiting to see if we keep silent. And you know, Mordecai was telling Esther, that the plans of God will, car- will be carried out even if she says yes or no. But, if we, but the reality is she will miss out the breakthrough. And for us tonight, do we want to miss out experiencing God's breakthrough and being part of His miracle to our lives and to other people's lives? Do we want to miss out seeing personally? It's like being in the VIP seat, seeing how God performs His miracles. But because of our fears, we choose to go to the general uh, admission 
and saying, yes, I just want to watch from afar. I don't want to be part of that. But the reality is we have the privilege to be used for God's redemption. I am so amazed that God redeems His people and He still uses redeemed people to redeem people. He can redeem His people at once, just one snap of a hand. He is that powerful, but why is He choosing us to, to be used? Because it is our relationship, because we are living for a purpose. And now, we can witness and be in the front row seats of witnessing of how God can use people, the young people, even not the young people, to redeem His people. In this uh, next verse, it says, And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I realized when I was, when I was still a student, this made a very great impact to me. And I want to talk to the young people right now. You are in your campus for such a time as this. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, for such a time as this. Don't ever look down on yourself because you're in a public high school. Don't ever look down on yourself because you're not in an honor roll. Don't ever look down on yourself because you're not in the top uh, big schools here in the Philippines. But you know, even if you're in the farthest province, even if hindi kilala yung school nyo, if God said that He has plans for you, He plans to prosper you and to give you a hope and a future. You are the, in that campus for such a time as this because there will be students, may mga mayiging kaibigan ka na may problema, may mga mayiging kaibigan ka na makakatulong ka, at ano yon? nagkataon lang na krisyano ka at ikaw yung nandun? Nagkataon lang ba na ikaw yung krisyano at kaya mo magbigay ng word ni God? Nagkataon lang ba na ikaw yung magkaya na mag-speak life sa mga kaibigan mo? I hope that we will not graduate without without accomplishing God's purpose in our lives. Because it's just how many years? College, four years, five years, and then after that, you're gonna go to the mission field, to your career field. And you know, I believe that for those students who are graduating, you're gonna go to your own career. You're gonna go there for such a time as this. You're gonna live a life of integrity in that engineering firm. You're gonna live a life of excellence in that hospital. You're, imagine, kung mga sujante na to in the next 30 years, our next president will be here. What could be our nation look like? And that is because of investing in the next generation. And for the older, not the older generation, but the not so young generation. Bap mo wala ng trabaho eh. Now, for some of you who are our teachers, who are our parents, who are relatives, I believe that you have a big part, big, big part in what God is doing in our lives, not just in the next generation. And I believe that as we invest time to these young people, as we build them up for success, as we guide them through life, as we pave the way for, for their success, they're gonna say and look into your eyes and say, I am thankful that you have come for such a time as this in my life. Because I will not be here because of you. And that is my prayer, that we will not miss out that opportunity to make a difference in someone else's life. And we are not saying that we're gonna change the world all at once, Now everybody will be saved, that everybody Naka, na tayo yung gagawa nun, but just one soul at a time. One life at a time. We have the privilege to be used for God's providence. Providence means it's a timely preparation of future events. I want to repeat that. It's a timely preparation of future events. What does it mean? It's not an accident that you're here. It's not an accident that we are in our campus right now. It's not an accident that we are, we are in our office right now. God has purposefully put you in that position because you have a mission to fulfill, because you have a purpose to achieve or to accomplish. You know, God does not look at us and get surprised. Oh, anak, ba't ka nandyan? Hindi ka dapat nandyan. Dapat nandito ka. 
I believe God does not look at us right, like that. When God looks at us, He says, you are rightfully where you are right now. Even if it means that there's like hardship or may trials and we're asking God, bakit ako nandito? Why of all families I'm here? Why of all the campus I'm here? But you know, God is telling that I have plans for you. That you are there for such a time as this. And in this verse, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf. And do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. And if I perish, I perish. This is Esther, Esther's reply to Mordecai. Why a sudden change of statement? Why a sudden change of, of perception or of perspective? Because Mordecai reminded her of the true nature and character of God. And that is the role of our older generation to remind the young people the true nature and character of God. And it says there that before Esther go to the king, he went to the king of all kings first and asked him for grace and favor, even though she, she was thinking that she was risking her life. Sabi niya, if I perish, I perish. Sabi niya, ano isang campus missionary sa Katipunan, patay kung patay. Are we that sold out? Patay kung patay? That are we saying that pupunta ako sa campus na to, kahit na yung mga kaibigan ko, binubuli ko, pero patay kung patay. Pipreach ako ng gospel sa kaibigan ko. Pag pumunta ba ako sa office, for those who are young professionals here, and everyone is doing ungodly things, are you just gonna stand in the corner and watch them do that? But are you going to make a difference and say, patay kung patay? Kahit na reject nila ako, I'm gonna do this. Because I know that God has called me to do this. And Esther, Esther was able to help and save that time the current and the next generation of Jews. And imagine, if Esther did not obey, probably wala na Israelite ngayon. But the magnitude of her obedience was so great that the next generation, in that next generation, came the one who saved all mankind, and that is Jesus. Imagine if she did not obey. Imagine if she did not obey. Well, ako naniniwala talaga ako na God will use somebody else. Pero kung ako lang yun, I would be so regretful to think I was not able to see firsthand God's miracle through me. You know, thinking right now, Ilang kabataan pa ang kailangan nating makitang nasisira ang buhay bago tayo kumilos? Ilang buhay pa ng mga kamag-anak natin na nakikita natin na nagkasira-sira bago tayo kumilos? Bago tayo magdasal? Bago tayo mag- mag-advance ng kingdom ni God sa buhay nila? Bago tayo mag-preach ng gospel? Bago natin ipakilala si Jesus sa kanila? This next generation could be our sons and daughters could be our sisters and brothers, could be our cousins and relatives. And if we do not act now, we are just standing in the corner and watch this, this generation be destroyed. And lastly, as I call the pianist, I'm about to end. I just want to leave this reminder that when Esther said, if I perish, I perish, She's going to do everything. But Jesus said, na kahit ipako ako sa krus, na kahit masaktan ako, gagawin ko to, kasi mahal ko kayo. Mahal niya tayong lahat. If we allow fear to overpower us, to overcome us, we're going to miss out a lot of what could have been. 
Hindi sana nakulong yung bata na yon dahil sa drugs. Hindi sana nalulong sa droga. Hindi sana, hindi na sana siya tumigil sa pag-aaral. Hindi sana nasira yung buhay niya. He could have been living a great and fulfilling life right now with Jesus. But no, he isn't. Why? Because we are so afraid. And I'm not saying this na in-exclude ko yung sarili ko. I am also included in this. And the great thing about this is that when God uses us for His redemption and providence, He does not leave us alone. When we were singing those songs earlier, that I am safe in your arms, that I can be confident in your goodness, is, is because we are living here, we have a mission to fulfill, but we are not alone. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have the spiritual family in us. We have you. We have the next generation. We have the older generation to impart the faith to the next generation. And this time, I want to I wanna ask for us to pray. I'm going to pray for one, for three groups of people actually. First, if you are saying right now and committing, Lord, I don't want to allow fear to paralyze me again. I want to be in the front row seat witnessing your miracle. And I would want to fulfill your mission in my life and to use me for other people's lives. Can you just raise up your hand? Lord, you see these hands, God. And right now, I believe that you are releasing a new level of faith right now. That you are, Lord, we speak against any fear, any fear of rejection. That, Lord, we're going to say that it's not by our mind, but by your spirit. It's not by our own strength and wisdom, but by your spirit. And we are relying on to you. Thank you for redeeming us and for using us, your redeemed people, to redeem people. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask all the students to stand up. I just have a challenge for you guys. Sabi ko nga, nandyan lang kayo for how many years sa campus nyo. So my challenge is this. Embrace your calling and fight the good fight of faith. And for all those who are sitting, can we lay our hands to these young people and declare God's purpose in their lives? And you young people, can you raise up your hands as a sign of faith and declaration of this prayer? Lord, Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for these students, for these young people. Lord, we, we believe in them so much. Because, Lord, we know that as they, ca- this, as they change their campus, they're not going to stay there forever, but they're going out and they're going to change their world. Lord, I pray for integrity, Lord, in their campus right now. I pray, Lord, that they're going to live a holy life and that they will not be living in fear. Even if there are people opposing their faith, they're going to stand up with conviction and say that my God is great and I will not step back in fear. Lord, we commit to you these students. We know that you have a plan. You have plans for them, plans to prosper them and give them a hope and a future. And we declare that to each one of them right now. We call out engineers. We call out people in the mission field. We call out people in the medical field. We call out people in the government offices to rise up from these people, God. That they're going out there and they're going to live a godly life and advancing your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And can we, can we ask the, those people who are sitting to please stand up also? And we want to pray for you. For all the students, can you just lay up your lay your hands with with our teachers, parents, and young professionals? 
Lord, we want to thank these people. We, we want to thank you, Lord, for these people, for you have used them, Lord, to inject faith to, to the next generation. That, Lord, their lives, Lord, are a living testimony of your faithfulness and your grace. And that you are saying to these, uh, to these people that you are with them and that, their pur- and that their purpose is not over when they graduated. And they are now making an impact in their own field, in their family, in their offices, in their businesses, wherever they are right now. Lord, we want to thank you as they believe in the young people. As they believe in the young people and pave the way for success for them, for believing in them. Lord, we want to thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.